Salutations everyone, this is Razor Boo, you guys, another Overwatch 2 video here today to talk about new map, new game mode, new character, new season. Uh, a, a lot of new, a lot of new in, in this in this season. Uh, first of all, let's talk about Juno. While she is the character I'm playing, I'm not going to be focusing on her in this video. I'm going to give her own separate video. I'm going to get some more time and maybe some better gameplays as her. This is actually pre-buff Juno, so it wouldn't even be a, a great reflection of how she is right now. Uh, even though I do pretty well in this game, uh, on this new map for the very first time, uh, she's she's okay. She's okay. She, I mean, we already knew that she was okay because we got to play her for a bit, and she wasn't very strong and wasn't very weak, and she still is. They gave her a nerf when they first released her. Uh, I like that when they give us the community notes to show, like, what's on their mind when they make a change, who are they listening to, what type of feedback that they're keeping in mind when they make changes. And they said that half of the people said that Juno was way too weak, half of the people said that she was way too strong. And like, yeah, that's the response to every single new character that's ever been added in Overwatch's history. Doesn't matter if it's Ayati or Malga or Life Weaver. Half the people are going to say they're super overpowered and broken and break the game. The other half is going to say they're super duper weak and they need a lot of buffs. Uh, it doesn't matter how strong, doesn't matter how weak they are. That's just always the response. I say this time and time again. You can watch any other video when I talk about a new character getting come out. That's always the response, and I always talk about that. So it's nice that the devs also see that. Uh, but they did give her a nerf, and then a couple of days after release, they're giving her a buff. So uh, she's just kind of fine. She she's she gives out a, a good enough healing to justify you know picking her with a, a number of different uh, support partners. She can do some damage, uh, but is not one of the better damage DPS out there. And her ultimate is just meh. It's not that great. Uh, you're not going to be able to take full advantage of its entire uptime uh, quite often because of the fact that it moves uh, at a you know a certain at, at a straight line at a, at a slow steady pace. That's just just the way things are. So I think she's okay, and her win rate actually right now is actually pretty good. Um, the new maps are fine. The new game mode is interesting. It definitely plays more different than I think, you know, the other new game modes that they've added to the game. It, it, it plays a lot more differently in, in how you want to use it, especially when it comes to ultimate usage. Uh, because of, you know, these are just one single objective. You don't have to, they don't move and you don't have to defend it after you cap it. It's just capping, right? So it's typically just going to be one singular fight until you get, you know, closer to their the enemy spawn. There might be a couple of fights there as they come out of respawn. Um, but, you know, being down a person because of a, a late kill from the previous location uh, can end up already losing the next fight because the fights are just super duper fast. So high mobility characters uh, tend to benefit the most here than they do in other game modes uh, because you want to get to that objective quickly and you want to just kind of surround and swarm and get that first pick because it's all about winning the first fight. Then it's usually over. Uh, it's not it's it's another fast one like even this game goes the distance and it only ends up being 10 minutes uh, granted it is possible people have found that uh, the, uh, it can just go forever because there's no timer and if one team is absolutely crushing the other team but they're, they're refusing to cap uh, then the game can just go on forever so that's you know a bit of a uh, a whoopsie doodle that the team I'm sure will have a fix for for some timer. Uh, so the game doesn't go on forever because the other team is just trolling you. But it's really fast, and it's just not as fun as I feel like the core game modes are. But it's also not terrible. You know, it's not as bad as, you know, 2 CP. And it it's definitely feels different. It plays different. Uh, you, you just you want to you want to hold on to those ultimates at, and use them at the beginning of fights. You don't want to save those till the end. Uh, and it's not going to be as beneficial as it might be in other game modes. You're not going to see, you know, big comeback swing fights because you just need to cap that thing and then it's over. Uh, as far as like the new meta and how things are shaping up, it's not all that different from last season, which you know if you watched my previous video, I'm not too hot about ever since the big tank change. But I feel like it's even worse this season. I feel like... Even though last season was really bad for tanks after the change, this season is even worse, in my opinion. 
because guys we only have 12 tanks right that's already not a lot especially when you compare it to the other roles but there is only one tank you have to deal with but so many of the tanks are just not playable there's only like four playable tanks consistently and two of them are just really bad against the other two Reinhardt is just super duper dominant. He was already good before the tank changes. He was on the rise at a positive win rate. He was toward the top three in a lot of uh, ranks. And they just made it so he's just the de facto tank right now, which sucks. I know a lot of people love it. A lot of people love when Reinhardt is the best tank, and he is absolutely the best tank. But the problem is... There are no tanks that are good against Reinhardt. There are no DPS that are good against Reinhardt. There are no supports against... Re good, of course, because supports don't really factor into uh, tanks all that much. E even uh, in interactions where they're designed to, like Brigida whipshotting a, a D Winston leaping in. Now that tanks just can't be moved at all, it's like, what is even the point of that interaction anymore? Um, but yeah, people already... You, we already can't play Winston... You know, like, I I love it when Winston works. I love having a Winston on my team because I know if they pick Winston, then they're good, and I'm always going to be on the same page, and I'm going to have a complimentary play style to them, and things are great. It can be really fun and dominating, but for the most part, playing with and as a Winston is just not something that's applicable in the vast majority of times. Doom and Wrecking Ball, uh, they can be playable, but against most... Uh, comps in most maps, most teams, they're not. And Malga is a super strong counter pick. He can absolutely dominate Winston. He can dominate Wrecking Ball. He can dominate Doom Fist. Outside of that, Doom or uh, Malga is not that great. Uh, I switched to Diva. Eat his eat his uh, self healing bullets, and he and the enemy switches. That seems to be what happens every time. So he is just a counter pick uh, when he's good. Obviously, he was the best at pro play, and probably still is because he's only been buffed twice since then. Uh, but that's neither here nor there. Uh, Sigma it should be a character that's kind of good in most maps all the time, right? He isn't because the enemy team can just pick Reinhardt and just W key. There's nothing Sigma can do, but it doesn't matter if you rock him every, off cooldown every single time. It just it doesn't matter. And D.Va can be good against other tanks, but it's still, it's always going to be Reinhardt, Junker Queen on at every single rank. Number one, Reinhardt. Number two, Junker Queen from bronze to diamond and then in masters and gm it switches it's junker queen reinhardt when it comes to who are the best performing tanks so there's not a lot of parody you 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 only really see reinhardt you'll you'll see some junker queen if the people uh can't exploit that she can be uh, very very strong uh ramatra is probably the biggest overall winner when it comes from season to season changes uh when ramatra can dominate he feels like the most dominating but he's just not going to be as consistent as reinhardt and everyone knows how to play with reinhardt it's easy uh to to work with the reinhardt everyone knows how to do it and everybody's play style already kind of works with the reinhardt where people don't know really how to play well with the diva or winston or wrecking ball or doomfist nearly as much but everybody knows and kind of by default plays as if they have a reinhardt on their team and he's absolutely dominating right now. That shield just kept getting buffs. It was inevitable. It was inevitable. It's. It doesn't feel good. It doesn't feel fun. This is the worst tank has ever felt in Overwatch 2 for me. When it comes to the supports, uh, you know, ever since the tank buffs, supports have been kind of living pretty well because they can just keep the tank up forever, and the tank is up forever. Then. There's less things to worry about as the support. But uh, Alari, she she got a nerf, but she's still number one. She's still fantastic. Uh, Juno's doing very well. Kiriko got a nerf, even though she was bottom two in every single rank, from bronze all the way to GM. And she's still bottom two. It's in her and Life Weaver switching out who's the worst and who's second to worst. So another questionable uh, balance patch, but that's just... That's just what happens. That's just, that's just what happens. Uh, Kiriko has been nerfed like eight times, I want to say, at this point. And it just has not been good for over a year. So I don't understand the idea around that. Uh, Diva got a nerf because they're like, hey, she wasn't doing that well, so we gave her a buff. The buff didn't seem to help, so we took it away. What? Explain to me how that makes sense. We gave her a buff, but we didn't really see a change, so we decided to get rid of the buff. Okay, go off, Queens, I guess. Um, I'll never be able to make heads or tails uh, about how they make these changes and their thought process around them, especially over the past year. It's just 
a lot of questionable decisions over after questionable decisions tracer uh there is a dual uh wielding a dps character who's dominating everywhere who's seeing a huge bump and is number one in masters it's not tracer because they nerfed her again for the 12th time she's at that seesaw of earth nerf and then unnerf nerf unnerf not even a buff it's never never even like a full revert of the last nerf She's just been middle of the pack before the nerf, and she's still there. Uh, she doesn't get good until GM, uh, to where she's like not even number one. And even in Masters, it's number one is Reaper. He's the number one. He's dominating everywhere right now. He's just really, really tanky, does a lot of damage, uh, can feed off a lot of tanks. He can uh, just dominate, uh, delete from the game, as he always has been able to do. People that scream for Reaper buffs... They don't need it because look at him. He's he's number one in Masters right now, and he's doing great everywhere, uh, especially in this game mode. Spin to win. You just pop that ult no matter where you are pretty much, and you're going to win that fight, and you're going to win that location. So he's doing great. The turret characters are doing great. Symmetra and Torbjorn are doing fantastic. Obviously, when Reinhardt has a big old shield and he's everywhere, she's the only one who can kind of exploit that, so that makes sense. Uh, and Torbjorn, they keep giving him buffs, making him unkillable. He'll beat a lot of tanks in 1v1s. He beats every DPS in a 1v1 because he just has the most health and half of its armor and is just kind of really, really good at everything and a turret that can absolutely uh, dominate a lot of matchups and characters and just make them switch by the turret simply existing without skill. So that's a lot of fun as well. And Venture's doing pretty good, but of course not applicable on every map or comp. So that is how things are. Oh, and Junker, Junkrat is doing really, really good. He is feasting uh, again right now. So the top are your turret characters and Junkrat uh, and Venture. And then Reaper is on the high rise and just keeps getting better as the uh, the skill level goes up. So yeah, that's how things are right now. Not the greatest, but still fun. Just kind of like Juno. She's not the greatest, but she's still fun.